now the two U.S. Navy sailors, Quartermaster Maurice Ennis and Jamie Plim, who both experienced uh, this radiation exposure. I don't know which one wants to start first. You've got 10 minutes to tell your story. Yep. Okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Jamie Plim. Um, I'll just kind of give you a chronological timeline of what happened. Um, we were already on deployment in 2011. Uh, we we're about to pull into a routine port call in South Korea. Uh, we go to our navigation brief the night before we were going to pull in, um, and we found out that the tsunami and earthquake happened. Immediately, we knew that we were going to uh, reroute the ship to Japan to provide aid and, um, you know, give them food, water. Um, so we did that immediately. We probably got to the coast of Japan the, probably the day after it happened. Um, we never heard anything about a nuclear power plant. We never knew anything about the possibility, let alone any kind of leak. Um, so we were there outside. Our job as quartermasters um, is not only navigating the ship, driving, plotting our course and track, but going outside at the top of the ship to raise flags um, to communicate with our ship. Um, so being outside, we were breathing in this radiation. We were handling flags, which are porous, very porous material, obviously. Um, the ropes that we use to haul the flags up are polyester. So again, a very um, porous material that just absorbed the radiation. Um, we didn't really hear anything for probably a couple weeks after about um, a leak in the uh, power plants. Um, and even then, it was just still considered kind of a rumor. We, the ship didn't really even go on lockdown, which I mean by that, like no one was allowed outside um, probably until about a month and a half after um, the initial, the, the 11th, March 11th. So um, we were outside breathing this in, handling stuff, handling materials, and just absorbing the radiation. Um, I'll let Maurice talk about his um, medical issues that he's encountered, but I'll talk about mine. Um, we didn't finish that deployment until October 2011, so we carried on with our deployment. Um, about halfway through, probably around the summertime, my menstrual cycle just disappeared completely. And then it would come back and disappear and go on and off. And this happened until about the summer of 2012, where it came back in such full force that um, I was in and out of the emergency room um, once they thought they were going to have to do a blood transfusion on me because I had lost so much, <clears throat> um, they couldn't. I was still in the Navy for this past year. I got out this past January 2013, so I was still getting Navy care for that year. Um, they, I was already on the birth control pill, which I guess they would they would do to control that kind of uh, menstrual cycle. So the only thing that they could do is say, um, this is called dysfunctional uterine bleeding, and um, we can give you an IUD with hormones in it. And so now that's what I have. Um, it hasn't really stopped it. I still have this issue. And um, now I have to pay for the, the medical costs of that. In addition to that, in February 2012, I developed bronchitis, um, and then from February to the summer of 2012, I got it six times. I was sent to a respiratory doctor, and it was determined that I developed asthma. So a lot of people um, don't understand that once you get out of the Navy, you don't get any health care at all. Um, if you retire and you stay in 20 years, you get health care. But we only did one enlistment. I did five years, he did four. So we don't, we don't get that unless it's a disability, a service-related disability, which dysfunctional uterine bleeding does not really count as a disability as of yet. So we're still fighting that case. And this is also what we're involved in a lawsuit against TEPCO um, for, for medical expenses that we're now having to, we're going to have to pay out of pocket for. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll speed it up because I know I don't have much time. I'll start with, uh, the beginning of my story where I received the radiation. A part of our job is we have to communicate with other ships 
using flags and uh, semaphore and Morse code when we're doing special operations. And uh, we store all our flags outside in a weather bag. Uh, we also fly our American flag, or ensign, at the highest point so people know where the U.S. Navy. I was uh, told by one of the higher ups to go out and retrieve the American flag so we can give it to the Japanese as a, as a friendship type of deal, like a gift. Uh, I pulled the flag down, it was flapping the wind and wrapped around me, it got all over me. Uh, I folded it up, took it down there, I gave it to them and I'm not sure what they did with it but I got off watch an hour later. I went to go get something to eat with uh, one of my uh, good friends. We stopped, I used the restroom, and we are just joking around because at the time there's still rumors going around about radiation being on the ship. And uh, we were joking around about my growing extra fingers and toes and stuff like that. And we were like, let's uh, stop and get checked for radiation because they started setting up these little checkpoints all along the ship. And they are saying, it's just a precaution. You don't have nothing to worry about. Uh, if you get some free time, just go get checked out. And we are joking. and laughing walking over there and he gets checked first and nothing happens he gets his hands checked and nothing happens and he's like smirking like I, I told you this is a waste of time and I get my boots checked uh, my pants and then my hands and as soon as they get to my hands the machine just goes crazy and instantly like we went from like smiling to uh, just being nervous and scared and uh, they instantly told everybody to back away from me. They made a perimeter around me. Uh, and they marched me to a decon station. The whole time they were telling everybody to stand fast, which means stay in your place and back up. And everybody's just looking and freaking out. And uh, I had to hold my hands up and I had bags on them. And they were telling everybody to contaminate the cellar. Everybody just get back, get back. And we make it to the decon station. And... I see there's a huge pile of clothes there from other sailors and I go in and they had to remove three layers of skin off my hands and arms and it wasn't like back to back it was they would scrub off one layer and then I would have to wash off this orange grit stuff that you use to get off paint and oil and then they would do it over again and then check and we'd start the process all over so in my head I was just kind of praying that it the machine would stop beeping so I could get it over with. Like, and nobody told me at the time like what was going on. Everybody just kind of told me just to stand there and be quiet and not to touch anybody or anything. It was almost like I had to play. And uh, finally, it, the machine stopped beeping and they let me go back to my birthing. And that's when I got to my birthing. They called and asked me to come up on watch to relieve the people on watch and they told me they had to receive the highest amount of radiation out of anybody on the ship. And then later we found out that our work area, since it was outside, had the highest readings for radiation because of all our flags and all our line that we used to haul up stuff. And uh, they cut off all the area to the rest of the ship. Well, Cap, you've got a few symptoms. Uh, like two months after, a uh, lump appeared on my jaw, and uh, I went and got that looked at by the Navy Medical, and they told me that there was uh, nothing they could do about it while we are out to sea, that we'd have to wait for us to pull in. And uh, another lump appeared between my eyes. Uh, I have another lump on my right thigh. As soon as I got out of the military, I went... Uh, back to college and I started playing college sports again and I actually ran within like three seconds of an Olympic time for my track and field team and slowly after that my body just started to fall apart. It's harder for me to breathe now. It feels a lot like my lungs are too big for my, my body whenever I do something like strenuous. Uh, I lost a lot of weight from uh, the time I was in the Navy until now, I got stomach ulcers, uh, and your I, hair. In the last month and a half, my it doesn't look like it, but my my hair started to fall out. 
I try to avoid brushing and combing it. And uh, I'll, I'll wash it like every three days. Just because I just, I don't, it's like Navy tradition. When you get out, you grow out your hair and you grow out your beard and because you're bald for so long. And it, like, it's just, just falling out, man. And I don't want to speed that up. So I try to avoid it. And what did you have to sign? Uh, like a little bit after we found out the, the ship was radiated and we had finished up helping out, we left the area. And before we pulled into our first port since the disaster, we all had to sign this paperwork saying that the military is not to be held liable for for uh, anything that happened and we had to sign paperwork saying that we weren't sick, that we were okay, and that they did test on us. And it, it wasn't like a yes or no type of option, it was just like you have to sign it.